If you want to be like me, drink six cups of chia that's been gelatinized in water and get your soluble fiber intake in. I hope you have a larger attention span than that because if you do that, you will definitely not be feeling too great. However, I did want to do this video to break down why I am more of a fan of soluble fiber than I am insoluble fiber. Both fibers are great, but we want to be able to understand why soluble fiber might be better for staying lean, for potential fat loss, and why it just is more, dare I say, metabolically active in a way. You see, it feeds our gut in a very powerful way, which we'll explain in just a minute. But just a quick breakdown, soluble fiber is the kind of fiber like from chia and from flax and stuff like that where when you consume it, it ends up getting kind of gelatinized, right? It's like if you were to put it in water, it would draw in water, it's soluble. Whereas insoluble fiber is like the roughage, it's the lettuce, it's the cellulose, it's the celery, it's the stuff that doesn't really break down, right? Well, we're gonna get a little bit technical, but a lot of this has to do with the microbiome, okay? So we think our microbiome is all about just a healthy gut. <laughs> I mean, it is, but the microbiome is much, much bigger than that. It, it plays a, such a role in our metabolism, plays such a huge role in potential fat loss, and if we feed it properly with soluble fiber, where most of the evidence lies, then we can really potentially put ourselves in a good spot, why I'm a big fan of it. So what we have to remember is soluble fiber, although it doesn't digest, that's a very simple way of putting it. It does ultimately break down and become a fuel. We tend to think that when we consume fiber, we consume it and it just exits our body because it's net zero and it's, that's it. No, soluble fiber is unique because it really feeds and ferments the gut microbiome a lot it, or triggers the fermentation within the gut microbiome. So what ends up happening is all the little microbiome guys come in and, and they eat on this soluble fiber, right? They eat on it and then more microbiome guys come in, all this different bacteria that feeds on it. And that's why it's important to have such a diverse profile. But at the end of this whole process, you're left with an end product. And this end product is called short chain fatty acids. These short chain fatty acids have huge roles within the body that no one ever really talks about. They are a literal energy source for our cells. So we think carbs, fats, protein. Well, Wait a minute, what about short chain fatty acids that are a result of our microbiome doing its job? These short chain fatty acids will feed our cells and literally there are some short chain fatty acids like acetate that literally feed our muscle cells. So your fiber, your soluble fiber specifically, I mean, your insoluble fiber too, but mainly your insoluble fiber will ultimately create a direct fuel for your muscles. Well, it doesn't stop there. Okay, there are studies that demonstrate that these short chain fatty acids regulate the balance between fatty acid oxidation and lipolysis. What does that mean? What the heck am I talking about? It means that these little suckers that are an end result of fiber breakdown can regulate how much fat we actually burn versus liberate. So there's mobilization and liberation of fat, and then there's actually burning it, okay? Fatty acid oxidation. It can help improve that fatty acid oxidation, which is so big when it comes down to staying lean. People ask, what fiber do I consume? What's this, what that? Well, it's almost always soluble fiber for that reason. I feel leaner and I feel like I get a better metabolic effect. But don't just take my word for it. There's an interesting study that broke it down even further. And then we'll circle back and go into some more biochem. This study was published in the journal Nutrition and Healthy Aging. It wasn't the biggest study, but it was profound. Okay, 19 participants, and they took a look at uh, two different ratios of soluble to insoluble fiber. They basically wanted to determine probably what you're trying to determine. How much, how much of what kind of fiber should they have? So one group had a uh, three to one ratio of soluble fiber to insoluble fiber, and the other group had the opposite three to one ratio of insoluble fiber to soluble fiber. Then of course there is a control group that didn't consume any fiber. Well, guess what? They wanted to measure CCK, cholecystokinin, like their satiety hormones. They wanted to measure uh, their glucose. They wanted to measure their insulin, their triglyceride levels, all these metabolic markers too. Okay, well at the end of the study, they determined that the group that had the soluble fiber, more of the soluble fiber, was not only more satiated, but they had better insulin levels, better glucose levels, they ended up having a better cholecystokinin level, meaning they were more satiated, but they even had lower triglycerides, which is wild. So we saw all these improvements come along, but then there's also the secondary effects we talked about as far as regulating our metabolism. So insoluble fiber is not bad, but it's not having the same effect. Now, here's an important thing to remember. When it comes down to being able to break down and utilize fiber properly, having a diverse microbiome is important. So which came first, the chicken or the egg, right? 
Fiber is going to help feed the bacteria, which is going to potentially help grow and diversify. But the more diverse of a microbiome that you have in the first place, the more effectively you can break these down into these end products. People ask what kind of probiotic I would typically recommend. I'll put a link down below for seed. Okay, seed is a probiotic, but it's more, more than a probiotic, it's a symbiotic. It has the prebiotic fibers and the probiotics in them. And they've done a really unique job. If you look at their breakdown of the kind of lactobacillus they have in it, everything is rooted in heavy research. And my videos are all about research all the time. I'm always referencing the science. That's just the whole nature of my brand. So when it comes down to a daily symbiotic, something that you would take, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you use seed. There is a link down below so you can get a special price on it just because you're watching this video. But also you can check out something called Seed University, which is where they educate the world on the bacteria within our gut and the microbiome in general. Now I'm circling this back to fiber too because I know that it all comes in with what we eat, but a diverse microbiome is important and one way to start getting yourself there is to utilize something like seeds. So check them out down below in the description. Coming back now to the metabolism and how soluble fiber plays a role with how we can potentially burn fat, we have to look at one other sort of metabolic mechanism. Okay, it's called AMPK. AMPK is, sounds like gobbledygook because it kind of is. If you're not a biochem nerd, who cares? I'll just give you the end result of what it does. It's a metabolic switch that the body needs to have flipped in order to start utilizing your stored fat or your stored tissue. If that switch is not on, your body is not really registering that you're in a deficit. So it turns out that the short chain fatty acids, the end result of fermenting and breaking down fibers, can have this effect at phosphorylating and flipping on the AMPK switch. Meaning, in a weird wraparound way, it's signaling our body to potentially start using its stored resources more. This is great for people that do a low carb protocol, it's great for people that intermittent fast, but it's great for people that are just after sort of just better health in general. So when you look at the big picture, soluble fiber is everything. Insoluble fiber, Sure, it has its purpose, and I'm not saying don't consume it. It's not bad, it's still tremendous. And please don't get the wrong idea. It still does break down and ferment. It just doesn't do so at the same rate as far as the end result of short chain fatty acid production as soluble fiber does. One other piece, and then I'll let you go, is the world of glucose, okay? So what we have found, again, is when we consume the right kind of fibers that draw up that short chain fatty acid content, we have better glucose tolerance. You see, it activates or elevates something called PYY, which again is nerdy biochem, but ultimately it helps us out when it comes down to glucose metabolism. So if you're someone that is kind of monitoring glucose, then you need to pay attention to that too, especially if you're on a lower carb protocol. It all plays a role. So soluble fiber at a roughly three to one ratio of insoluble fiber is probably what I would typically recommend. As always, keep it locked in here in my videos, and I'll see you tomorrow.